Imagine you're being mugged on the streets. What street would you prefer? A crowded street with many witnesses and people to help you? Or a quiet alley with only a few people that can help you? I bet you'd go for the first scenario, right? But it might not be the best choice. In this video of Brains Applied, I'm going to explain you why. Remember, if you want to receive notifications for my future videos, press the subscribe button and the bell icon to become part of our notification squad. In the early hours of March 13, 1964, Kitty Genovese was walking home from her work when she got stabbed in the back with a hunting knife by Winston Mosley. She started screaming. Lights were turned on, windows were opened and the attacker was yelled at by the neighbors. As the attacker fled, the neighbors went back to bed and Miss Genovese tried to get back to her apartment. At this moment, Mosley was able to attack her again. Miss Genovese started shrieking, the whole cycle repeated itself and eventually she died. The New York Times later reported that there were about 38 witnesses that a city bus drove by and still Mosley had 3 attempts and over half an hour to murder, rob and rape Kitty Genovese, while no one called the police or came out of his apartment to help. Although it has been later said that the story was widely exaggerated, it has been the basis for what has later been investigated as the bystander effect. <laughs> The bystander effect is a social psychological phenomenon in which individuals are less likely to offer help to a victim when other people are present. It was first investigated in a lab by John Darley and Bib Latane in 1968. In their experiment, students of introductory psychology courses at the New York University were asked to take part in an unspecified experiment. When arriving at the experiment location, the subjects found themselves in a long hallway with plenty of doors to several tiny rooms. The participants were led into one of these rooms, they were given a pair of headphones and a microphone and were told to listen. Via the headphones, the experimenters said that they were interested in learning about personal problems faced by college students in a high pressure urban environment. To prevent the students from having to be ashamed of their experiences, they were put in separate rooms in order to provide anonymity. The experimenter wouldn't listen to the discussion as he didn't want to influence it. As he was not present, the participants were allowed to speak through the intercom for several minutes in a given order in several rounds. When the timer turned on one microphone, the others were turned off. In this way, the discussion would remain organized. The real reason to put the participants into a cubicle was to allow the experimenter to play the voices of the other participants from a tape recorder. And they blocked the microphones to prevent the participants from trying to talk directly to another tape recorder participant. The experimenter himself said that he wasn't listening to the discussion because they needed to remove the responsible person from the scene. The first tape recorder participant that was allowed to speak hesitantly mentioned that he was prone to suffer from seizures in stressful situations. After all tape recorder participants had introduced themselves, the real participant had to speak as the last person. As the round started over, the first participant commented on what was said before until his voice started to grow louder and he mentioned that he thought he was having a seizure. After a while, his signal was abruptly cut off because he was out of speaking time. The dependent variable of this experiment, or in other words, the variable that is under investigation, was in this case the speed with which the participants reported the emergency to the experimenter in the hallway. The independent variable, the variable which is suspected to influence the outcome, was in this case the size of the discussion groups. The experimenter tried groups of two persons, with only the victim and the participants, and of three and six persons. Except for two cases, all participants believed the seizure to be real. 85% of the participants who were alone in a discussion with the victim reported the seizure before the victim's feed was cut off. 
only 31% of the participants who thought 4 other persons were listening as well did the same. Just 62% of the subjects in this group ever reported the emergency. And there was no difference in reporting speed between male and female students. Darley and Latane tried different group compositions by changing the genders of the tape recorded participants and by giving them different backgrounds, for example a pre-medical student. But this didn't make any difference. The experiment's scenario created a dilemma for the participants. They felt the shame and guilt of not helping the victim, and on the other hand they didn't want to overreact and make a fool out of themselves by ruining the experiment. In larger test groups, the costs of not reacting was reduced and the conflict was enlarged as the real participant thought the tape recorder participants could report the seizure as well. It is important to note that the participants were not able to see how other people reacted because of the very simple reason they didn't exist. This removed behavior of others as a variable in this experiment, although it might be very important in a real life scenario like emergencies, where people can interact with each other. It is so important because people don't want to look like an overreacting fool or like they don't care about other people at all, so they copy the behavior of other people in their environment. However, the Genovese murder case is more similar to this experiment as all witnesses were put in their own separate apartment without having the means to communicate. This created a diffusion of responsibility over a large group of people, resulting in no reaction from witnesses. The phenomenon that we now call the bystander effect. Congratulations, you have made it to the end of the video and I have great news for you. This big sexy round button on the left allows you to subscribe to our channel and to receive notifications when we publish new entertaining videos. You better click the shit out of it. I also advise you to check out my previous videos. I guarantee you, you will like them. And I will see you guys next time.